folks, how's it going, Dr. Spin? Collective Guide Reviews and General Musical Meanderings. Finally, list season is over. So we can get kind of back into the, the business of actually reviewing albums and digging a little bit deeper into some music that we, we know and love. Um, but unfortunately, usually what happens during this time when list season happens, um, and especially getting to the age that we are, um, musicians pass on. And always during list season, it seems like people pass on that I want to address. So the next few posts, I think, are going to be some memorial posts for people who have passed on. This particular one, I'm going to talk a little bit about Angelo Badalamenti. Angelo Badalamenti is a movie composer uh, who did, you know, movie soundtracks for the Home Alone series and even Nightmare on Elm Street, a couple of those movies. But most known for his work on the show Twin Peaks. He composed all the music for the original season and a half of that very influential TV series. Now, the Twin Peaks TV series soundtrack really made it have an impact on me when I had a pretty narrow idea about what I thought the soundtrack was about. You know, my whole soundtrack concert was totally based off of John Williams and Star Wars and big bombastic thematic stuff. And it's really sort of moody and atmospheric side revealed something to me about soundtracks that I didn't really realize up until that point. That being the importance of a movie soundtrack to be able to not only be associated with the movie that it accompanies, but also be able to stand on its own. You know, and I think that Angelo Badalamenti's soundtrack for Twin Peaks did that. In the course of creating the soundtrack for the original Twin Peaks TV series, he created lots of extremely memorable musical themes um, that actually became associated with the characters. And the odd thing about Twin Peaks as a show is that it's a very surreal, but also has very well-developed and interesting characters. And so since these little leitmotif ideas became associated with the characters, the soundtrack for Twin Peaks became as much a character for the show as possible. And it really captured the liminal tone of that show. And I think the most identifiable and elegant of these themes is the Laura Palmer theme. And we're really blessed actually because of the way the internet is, is there's this really great clip out there where you get a chance to see Angela Bellamenti sit down and sort of tell the story of how he came up with the Laura Palmer and, theme. And you can hear the hoot of an owl and you're in the dark woods, you know, just, just get me into that beautiful darkness with the soft wind. And I started playing. <laughs> And if you're at all interested, that, that whole clip is gold if you watch the whole thing. Because not only do you get a chance to kind of see Angela Badalamenti recall the story of, of composing this theme with, with David Lynch, and I really believe the way that he tells the whole story, that it pretty much played out like he explains it. It also shows Badalamenti's capacity as a storyteller, even within his own pieces of music and his own songs. As David Lynch is unspooling the idea of Twin Peaks and Laura Palmer to him. He's sort of capturing those ideas on the piano. And one of the things that I think is really telling about this that I want to kind of come back to is this opening motif that he uses at the beginning of the Laura Palmer theme. What you missed in the edit of that clip was Angela Badalamenti's full recollection of the way in which David Lynch was prompting him to come up with music. Um, that would end up being the music for, for Twin Peaks. And David Lynch would sat down with him and sort of was giving him a visual ideas and some scenarios and a real loose narrative. And um, Angela Badalamenti was sort of ad-libbing and coming up with stuff that fit where David Lynch was going, just kind of followed him along with the arc of the story. And I think for the, for the sake of this, the thing that was really uh, most compelling is that David Lynch says to him, you know, it's the woods. It's dark outside. There's wind going through the trees. And Angela Badalamenti comes up with this. And that is really incredibly evocative by itself and very easy, to be honest. I mean, it's, it's, it's I call it elegant because it's really only one note's difference. Uh, on, on one hand, it starts off with this. 
C minor six to C minor, one note moving up and down. And it shifts a little bit here. It goes to full E major for a second, but with an E flat in the bass. C6 to C minor. That's proof to me personally that a musical idea does not have to be complicated to be good, or certainly to be evocative. And if the scene played out the way that Angelo Badalamenti described it, um, that came out almost effortlessly whenever he gave him the prompt of being um, in the woods and in the dark. So for the sake of this post, I'm going to call that the woods motif. Believe me when I tell you, as a person that recently moved into like basically the, a wooded area into the forest, essentially, um, it's extremely um, visceral the way that it captures the feeling of the woods at night. I mean, I wouldn't want to walk around outside with this on headphones on at night and, and you know, that would be a challenge for me to not kind of get spooked by that, by that, the, the haunting nature of that theme. That only plays a little small part in the overall big picture of the Laura Palmer theme about how it's light and dark and how it plays against each other. What Angela Badalamenti did so well in Twin Peaks was to be able to capture not only its sort of light and dark side, but also its kind of comedic, almost um, um, slapstick side on one end and still be very somber and serious when it needed to. So not only did Angelo Badalamenti do the soundtrack for the Twin Peaks series, but he also did the, the soundtrack for Fire Walk With Me, the, the prequel movie for Twin Peaks. Now, although this movie got kind of critically lambasted in some ways, you got to keep in mind that this is originally supposed to be a big four-hour movie that, that David Lynch had put together. And like a lot of David Lynch's work, um, studio the studio kind of got involved and chopped it up. And it took this four-hour epic and chopped it down to like a two-hour movie. And the narrative is already kind of, you know, how, how David Lynch is a little bit surrealist in the first place, really made it difficult to follow for the average person, unless you're really invested in it. Now, there is a really great four-hour fan remix of this movie that takes all the available uh, footage that's out there. This it was made like B sides and, and extra bonus materials on discs and re edits them into a longer three and a half, four hour version of the movie that makes a lot more sense. If you have an opportunity to go uh, hunt that down, you should do it. But what for the purposes here that I want to catch is that the fire walk with me movie soundtrack has a much darker and much more somber tone than the TV show did. And that's because of the change in the movie. I mean, Angela Bellamenti was very, very good about matching David Lynch's tone step for step as he went into this movie. And, you know, the sort of apple pie coffee component of Twin Peaks was really downplayed in the movie. It was a lot, a lot darker affair. And Angela Bellamenti captures that beautifully throughout this. But there's still connection. Because if you look at the very first part of the, the opening theme, Twin Peaks Firewalk With Me theme, the opening bit is the woods theme. He uses that very elegant, uh, small movement in the piano and expands it to a full piece. And not only that, puts this muted trumpet solo on top of it that really like captures the ghost of Miles Davis in some ways. It, it's very simple melody, doesn't step on the chord progression in any way, but is beautifully elegant and beautifully played and really adds to the tone of the movie going forward. Now, the Twin Peaks music and Fire Walk With Me, and I like to refer to this as sort of four-dimensional jazz, meaning that its, it's, it's template for the sound in general is 50s era jazz. But it, it keeps having these kind of odd objects kind of float through it. Sometimes it's a, it's a contemporary synthesizer. Sometimes it's a double bass part or some combination. Something that's just a little off. In fact, if you're going to take Twin Peaks music out on tour, you need a drummer, two bass players, more than likely, uh, a piano player, uh, a trumpet or a saxophone, one or the other, vibes, and the guy playing synthesizers. If you had this ensemble of people, you could really do good renditions of, of this of this Twin Peaks music. It's, it's 
overall very accessible instrumentation, but it's put together in these kind of weird ways. I would argue that the Twin Peaks Fire Walk of Me is really a, a bassist album. If you are a fan of stand-up bass, um, and you really pay attention to what's going on in this album, there's some fantastic bass playing going on, and it takes a huge role because bass is, again, one of those instruments that has generally has a muted tone to it. And the muted tone is perfect for the environment of this album. And clearly, I think that Angelo Bedlamenti knows this because he has some really high, uh, high-octane high players in this album. You got Rufus Reed on a couple of tracks. You got Ron Carter on a couple of tracks. Ron Carter's played on over 2,000 jazz albums, and he makes a really great appearance here. What I think is really interesting about this though too is sort of the dichotomy of bass playing that happened in this album because there's lots of pizzicato bass there's also a lot of arco bass sometimes at the same time i think this sounds like to me that there are some of these that are actually have double tracked bass parts where there's a pluck park and there's an arco part which again really points to the intentionality with which um, Angelo Badalamenti is writing this music because you don't normally write for two bass players on a piece of music. But there's a certain mood that that calls forth that's really, really uh, prominent on this album. And mood is what this album is all, is all about. Capturing this almost sense of sleep paralysis within the music is, is the, the aim, it feels like, of this album. And even though a lot of these songs are based on 50s style um, jazz, they do take some diversions. There's some here where like The Pink Room, which is like the sort of raucous police siren um, bass, stand-up bass groove. And then you have a couple tracks in here that are actually just vocal tracks. And one of them, I think, is a huge standout track that I, whenever I, if I'm going to play this album for anybody, it's going to be this one. This is the song Sycamore Trees by Jimmy Scott. This tune is haunting and dramatic, has masterful bass playing from Ron Carter, where he just, at one point in time, he just opens it up and plays this really great arco bass line that really um, fills out the whole thing. But of course, the star of the show is, is Jimmy Scott. Uh, Jimmy Scott, another another um, jazz person who passed on 2014, and has a very distinctive voice, almost sounds um, feminine in its pitch, but really just lays it on here beautifully. And alongside that, the saxophone solo in this song um, is, a, is a perfect example of how just the simple restatement of a melody makes such a, 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 an effective solo in a jazz setting. I'll see you in the The tree. Here's a fun fact. The Sycamore Trees track actually isn't in the Fire Walk With Me movie. The Sycamore Trees was performed in the last episode of Twin Peaks and is a, a uh, like almost in some ways the climax of the entire first series. But I think it's important to point out Jimmy Scott here because he represents a sort of one of many David Lynch's sort of archetypical characters that shows up in his films. If you watch David Lynch's films regularly, you'll start to notice that he has a certain iconography that shows up, you know, um, a blonde haired girl and a dark haired girl, um, curtains in the background. Um, a transformation where a person be, it be goes from one state of being to another over, over the course of the, the plot of the show. Another archetype that shows up in Love David Lynch's work is what I call the Chanteuse. And the Chanteuse is a character, is a singer very, very often, who sing and is most often very obviously lip syncing along with the backing track. For the Twin Peaks finale, Jimmy Scott kind of plays this role. For the Twin Peaks series, there's actually a more prominent person that kind of plays this role, and that's Julie Cruz. Julie Cruz actually got involved with Angelo Badalamente uh, shortly before Twin Peaks, right around when Blue Velvet was happening. Between the Blue Velvet and, and Twin Peaks, they really developed this relationship that blossomed into what happened on Twin Peaks. And Julie Cruz plays a role in a lot of the songs in Twin Peaks. As a matter of fact, the Twin Peaks theme was reinvented as a song um, falling with, with her singing the, the lyrics. She's also present on the Fire Walk With Me soundtrack with the song uh, Questions in a World of Blue.
And although Julie Cruz had a, a career of her own and actually for a while sang with the B-52s, she was most always most closely associated with Twin Peaks. And unfortunately also herself passed away in 2022. And although she plays the, the, the acting role of the Chanteuse in, in, in the Twin Peaks series, I, I would like to argue that the, the Twin Peaks music plays as such a huge role um, in, in the creation of the mood of Twin Peaks and the world of Twin Peaks that you can't, you can't divest it. And the way that Battle of Mente could capture the subconscious messages that, that David Lynch used to fuel all of his work as uh, phenomenally respectable and, and really identifies him as a very open and empathic person. We can look at these soundtracks and really just be amazed and impressed by the way in which he was able to capture the audio world, the in internal empathic side of Twin Peaks and Fire Walk With Me. But that's all I got to say about Twin Peaks, Fire Walk With Me, at least the highlights of that of this soundtrack. Fantastic soundtrack, even if you've never really set, checked out um, the movie. It, as a standalone experience, it's, it's moving. Uh, it's, a, it's a kind of soundtrack that if you put it on with headphones and walk around, you'd think you could read people's minds. And that was, I think, totally the point. So check it out if you have the opportunity. If you like the video, of course, please like and subscribe and share it out with your friends. Also, follow me over on Spotify. Putting all tracks up. All the stuff I've been listening to for the beginning of this year from Tier 1 is up there. Twin Peaks uh, uh, soundtrack tracks will be up there. Also, my Tier 1 showdowns have started. If you want to get on this year's Viewer's Choice uh, Top 20, please head over to my Patreon page and sign up. Um, it's not too late. Jump on in. And, and the more voices we have involved in making that Top 20-something, um, the better it will be. Um, so until I see you guys next time, catch on the flip side.